Hello, and thank you for tuning in to Answers from the Lab, where we share Mayo Clinic knowledge and advancements on the state of testing and science from laboratory leaders and the people who are making it happen behind the scenes. I'm Dr. Bobby Pritt, a clinical microbiologist and the chair of the Division of Clinical Microbiology at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. With me today is Dr. Bill Maurice, the chair of the Department of Laboratory Medicine and Pathology at Mayo Clinic and the president of Mayo Clinic Laboratories. This is our weekly discussion with Dr. Maurice in which we learn about updates in laboratory testing during the COVID-19 pandemic. So hi, Bill. It's great to have you back as always. Yeah, here we are. Here another we are again. Another podcast. <laughs> great to be here. Yeah, so today um, I thought we would talk a little bit about Mayo Clinic Laboratories. We've received some questions from our viewers about Mayo Clinic Labs, what is it? Is it just the laboratories at Mayo Clinic? Uh, what's its mission? How many tests do you do each year? So we thought, I thought we'd just start with the basics and kind of talk about Mayo Clinic Labs. Yeah, um, that sounds great. Yeah, and then, you know, in future podcasts, we could talk about uh, future visions as we've done as far as medicine in general. So I'll start with a basic question. Um, what is Mayo Clinic Laboratories? So Mayo Clinic Laboratories really is it's the pre and post analytical services that allow us to open up our clinical laboratories in the department to specimens from the outside world for patients that haven't had the chance to visit uh, one of our campuses, essentially, is what it is. So, um, and it goes back, I mean, to really understand it, it actually was started 50 years ago. So we're on our 50th okay. anniversary this That's year. Great. So, and it was started by a hematopathologist, actually, Dr. O'Sullivan, uh, mm -hmm. who is still around and is, he's a wonderful person. Um, and uh, he and the Lou Walner, because everything at Mayo is physician administrative partnership, and it was really their their um, their vision, right? And it shows the power of that vision that what it's grown to today, which I'm sure we're going to touch on. But, but basically, at that time, Mayo Clinic uh, was looking at ways that it could kind of expand its reach outside of the Rochester campus because that was the only campus that existed 50 years ago. And it was Dr. O'Sullivan and Lou's idea. Uh, to, to actually say, well, we should open up our laboratories. We have capacity, we have unique tests because we have unique patients um, and we should open up our laboratories to some of the regional hospitals, not to do all their testing, but just to do the testing that we have here at Mayo Clinic, which they don't have in their own hospitals. And so he's a very, he's, he's Irish. So he's very relationship driven. <laughs> so, he, um, so he actually, it started with him driving actually to regional hospitals, meeting the pathologists, meeting the hospital leadership, uh, pitching this idea to them, and then they, and then actually sometimes he would bring the specimens in back in the in the trunk of his car, uh, back oh, wow. to be tested to be tested. So that's where it started 50 years ago, and it was a lot. It was interesting. It was not called Mayo Clinic Labs. It was called Mayo Medical Labs, and that did reflect. I mean, the institution, he, as you talked to him, had very. Um, they thought it was a good idea, but it was so different from Mayo Clinic that they weren't sure if it should be called Mayo Clinic. Maybe Mayo Clinic should only be that. That you know the practice here in, in Rochester. So it started from the, from those really um, small beginnings. It grew quite quickly. I mean, he talks about the fact that um, he never they never went into a hospital where they were not well received or per, people weren't excited to talk to them. And it's really because it, of course Mayo Clinic is seen as a leader in healthcare, and yeah, so sure. even back then. So so yeah. So it really took off quickly from there. It is really exciting. 50 years of Mayo Clinic Laboratories, formerly Mayo Medical Laboratories. Um, it's something that I'm so proud to be a part of just because of our mission and how we really work with other laboratories and physicians to help support patient care. Um, we yeah. have our yeah. mission that we really hold true to. Yeah, no, so you're right. I mean, as, especially for you, someone, our former vice chair of education. Mm -hmm. Personally, I mean, I, I don't know if I would have done, but I've said this before, I don't know if I would have done pathology if I had not been at Mayo, just because it is so interactive here. You get a chance to talk to people outside all the time uh, and consult with them when they send things in, uh, you know, we can give them information because we, you know, there's a big educational component around the individual tests and talking to the providers and sometimes even the patients about their results. Oh but yeah, I, I get calls all the time and people have my personal number and I don't mind at all, you know, it goes right to me. They don't have to go through layers of administration. And, and I love hearing directly from the people ordering our tests that just wanna know more about it. Yeah, no, you're right. And the other piece of it too is for me, I'm, clinic labs, Mayo Medical Labs at the time, it's also educating the hospitals about how to best use their labs to support mm -hmm. their patient care. 
as we've done here through the pandemic, you know, um, so helping them to grow their laboratories, actually, it was a big part of what we did. The other real secret to Mayo Clinic Labs is the founders, particularly Lou Walner, again, the administrator, understood what made Mayo special. Mayo is very system driven. And so they wanted to make sure that if someone used Mayo Clinic Labs or Mayo Medical Labs at that time, they had the same experience as a provider on our campus. So they designed the logistics. So we have the, we have the best you know, loss specimen rate and those sorts of things, the lowest by far. We also have the call center, which to your point, mm -hmm. you know, it actually has been named uh, one of the top call centers, not just healthcare, but of industries of this size, companies yeah. of this size a number of times, because it's all designed around trying to turn things around quickly, answering patients and, and uh, providers questions as quickly as possible, and also making sure we get the specimens here as quickly as we can um, and get the answers back to patients knowing that time is key. So, I mean, those, all those things are all baked into Mayo Medical Labs on the logistical side as well. So it's not just the labs uh, that are doing the testing, it's the whole system is designed to really work for patients. Yeah, well, you know, you've brought up a number of really important points. I, I think we're the largest reference laboratory in the United States that is fully integrated with a, a world-renowned medical hospital. And so we perform testing for all of our patients the same yeah. way, with the yeah. same high quality. I know in my laboratory, we never stop to think, oh, is this a Mayo Clinic lab patient from outside of Mayo or is this a local patient? I mean, we put the same level of quality and emphasis of everything we do um, equally across yeah. all those patient specimens. Yeah, you're right. And you never make any distinction. To me, they're all, they're all Mayo they're all patients, patients. honestly. Um, yeah. That's why, in fact, that I was really... Uh, I helped lead the charge to change the name from Mayo Medical Labs to Mayo Clinic Labs. I did ask Dr. O'Sullivan about that if he if he was disappointed. He was actually really excited. Oh, good. Uh, because you know, to me, oftentimes it made people feel like, well, then it's just if it's Mayo Medical Labs, it's not Mayo Clinic, or does it somehow get treated differently? Mm -hmm. To me, it's 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 Mayo Clinic laboratories being available to patients outside of our campus, right? So. Uh, having it called that was important to me and it's just the timing was right too because the institution was willing to look at that mm -hmm. um and the other piece of it to your point is we never stop at mayo and say well what's the business case for this test i mean we we may create tests based on patient needs um and then we make them available to the outside because we understand there's patients outside of our walls that need them too as if for instance the diseases that i'm interested in uh lgl leukemias are quite rare um but yet you know they we, we had a practice here. We created tests to help diagnose that condition. And now, you know, we get maybe 40 or 50 a month, um, not huge numbers, but that's 40 or 50 people that wouldn't have an answer if we hadn't created that test. So, or that group of tests. And so that's really what the mission of Mayo, that's how that whole needs of the patient come first. I mean, doing yeah. good medicine is what we do. Well, and it allows us to learn, uh, First of all, providing tests that our patients need, but then uh, learning how to make better tests based on the needs of our patient and then being able to provide those same tests to anyone through Mayo Clinic Laboratories. Uh, so it's a very different model than just a commercialized reference lab model, which is another thing that I've always been very proud of working here at Mayo Clinic. Yeah, I know. I agree. I, I'm sure that you've had the same experience because the other piece of it is that highly collaborative nature with the people sending us the tests, we're not just, you know, we get on the phone, we talk, as you say. So I learned, I've learned a lot about these diseases from the outside by talking to clinicians and to the pathologists and others that are sending the tests, understanding what the clinical scenario is, oftentimes doing some, even writing up some of these cases, because with the volumes, you start to see things that aren't described in the literature. Um, and so it is a very much a dynamic process. So the interesting that what's happened over time, and I don't know that this was fully in the vision of the founders going back to the 50 year history, is that when we open these tests up, it allows us to do many more of them, which then not only makes them really available to patients at Mayo, right, because it would be difficult for some of these very rare conditions to have tests available just for one or two patients a year. Um, but now, because we open to the outside, it brings in specimens, we learn collectively um, around with, with the people sending us the tests about these conditions, to your point, and then we have more knowledge to share. It either drives research, translational studies for our, for our trainees, it creates a very unique and vibrant educational experience for them that they can really learn and learn how to communicate, not just about the tests themselves. And then honestly, that's all stuff that we can then give back to 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 the people using Mayo Clinic Labs, right? So mm -hmm. it becomes this virtuous cycle where we're interacting with, with the patients on the outside, creating knowledge that we share back with our patients and with the providers and with the people using Mayo Clinic Labs. And it's grown, it's amazing. So at pre-pandemic, 
We had over 4,000 customers, hospital-based customers in the United States. And at that point, it's the number fluctuates a little bit, but definitely over 75 countries. So we're really a global business at this point, mm -hmm. um, which is pretty astounding when you think back to Dr. O'Sullivan driving his car around, you know, Southern. <laughs> it with specimens yeah. in the trunk of his car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Interestingly, just so it's an interesting tidbit, we have the Mayo Clinic Health System, right? Which is mm -hmm. Eau Claire, La Crosse, um, other Mankato, Albert Lee. So, so hospitals and healthcare settings across our region. The first president of the health system was actually Dr. O'Sullivan because oh, he, nice. he knew most of the people and he had built all these relationships. And I think that spirit actually still lives in Mayo Clinic Labs today, which is something I'm, I'm really proud of too, because mm -hmm. I love the idea that we're part of a community and that the labs is just a conduit to create that. Yeah, well, really nicely said. So today then, do you uh, have an idea of how many tests we perform each year? Well, it's been, it's a little bit skewed. By yeah, with COVID, pandemic. it's a little but I know pre-COVID, we did 20, in 2019, we did 25 million tests. Yeah, wow. And so a lot. So we are the unique in that way too. We're very highly, you know, there's others, there's other reference labs which are bigger, but in terms of one doing almost all of it on this campus, a little bit in Arizona and Florida is very unique. Um, most of the 20, over, you know, most of those 25 million tests were done here. Interestingly, on this campus, and interestingly, um, what started is opening up our, basically our excess capacity to the outside has now actually flipped. So we do more testing for the outside world than we do for our own patients. So it's a poly, it used to be, it, it, it just crossed the 50, 50 threshold, I think my second or third year in this role. So, but importantly, I'm still the chair of the department as well as the president of Mayo Clinic Labs, because it's still to your point, that same spirit of it's the same labs used to support our patients, just some of them aren't on our campus. Yeah, I think that's really important. You have a, a foot in both camps and you have that connection to our patients here, our patients everywhere. Um, I think that's really important. Yeah, and I think it's really important too, because look, the pandemic, we're not, it's labs are becoming biz, big business, right? And I think mm -hmm. to make sure that that business keeps in at front and center the needs of an individual person, right? And, mm -hmm. and I think that the pandemic has highlighted that we need to do better in terms of access and equitability in healthcare and diagnostics are gonna be a big part of that. Um, so I think the other thing is if you're listening and you're in the lab, this is not a time to, to, to shy away. It's a time to really be a, a voice about the value of labs and the importance of clinical labs in taking care of people and creating health and wellness for, for the world. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a, it's a real blessing that I have that I, in having both roles, it gives me a kind of unique perch to, to, to see both sides, right? And to make mm -hmm. sure that we kind of keep our mission front and center. Well, that's something I always bring up with my staff too, is that uh, I tell them the stories as I hear them uh, of how they're impacting patient care, not just here in Rochester, Minnesota, but all across the United States and in different countries. And I think that really gives them a lot of sense of pride in what they do because they're helping to diagnose conditions that are life-threatening, that guide treatment, um, th what they're doing uh, makes a real difference yeah. in patients' lives. Absolutely. And then the way that we can share that knowledge back, it's not just all, it's not all just sequestered here. So as we learn, we share it back with people sending us a test so then mm -hmm. they can get smarter about managing their patients and understanding how to use the lab as well. Yeah, this is probably one of the few uh, places where we'll actually, you know, try to sometimes talk you out of a test if it's not an appropriate test. I talk to providers all the time and I say, you know, this wouldn't be the appropriate test. Perhaps there'd be another test or maybe in this situation, a test isn't needed at all. I mean, it's really, it, like you said, it's not the commercial aspect and the profit. It's about doing the right test for the patient. Exactly. It's about doing, getting back to the Will Mayo vision of that metropolitan system of medicine mm -hmm. to create. I mean, that's really what's it, it energizing for me is that Mayo Medical Labs, Mayo Clinic Labs now can be part of that, of that creating that vision, right? Because we can connect to the outside. Um, we can share knowledge. Another big part of our business model is actually we, with our hospitals that use us, we actually look at the tests they send us and sometimes tell them, you know, you really should be doing this on your own. Yeah. So <laughs> I've made uh, some of those phone calls like, you know, you're the only hospital that orders this test and then try to understand why they might be doing so. And there may be a legitimate reason, but most of the time I found that it was just, you know, in an order set and it's a real test utilization opportunity where they can stop ordering an unnecessary test. Yeah. Exactly. Or they're sending so much of it, 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 it should be, you know, it's, it's, and it's more routine. It's kind of like, we'll talk with them and say, you might, you might want to consider, and we'll actually help them. Yeah, bring a test in. Our protocols and those sorts of things. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's a unique place. It makes it, uh, everything that we do is designed around our mission, right? Mm -hmm. And, and, and so 
I think that's why it's been successful. I think that's why it's grown from the back of someone's car to, to what yeah. we are today. So yeah, stick to our mission. Yep. Well, uh, any closing words on Mayo Clinic Laboratories or anything that we didn't cover today? Well, I just to say, I mean, just, you know, it's a real privilege to be in the role that I am in. Just like you said, you know, for all of us that work here, I think it's a real privilege to get to work through Mayo Clinic Labs. Our field staff um, are, you know, it's amazing. The people that come to work with us in terms of in Mayo Clinic Labs, not just on the physician scientist side, but it's on, you know, and in the labs, but actually out there in the field all mission aligned, all talking about the joy that it brings them when they can go into a doctor's office and, and offer them tests and knowledge around those tests that others can't. So it's a real privilege. And I just want to say thank you personally, because it takes the leadership of people like you to make it real. And just to thank the people like use Mail Clinic Labs, because it really is part of that, that whole, that whole, uh, that whole family, if you will, and the whole community of lab medicine. So that's kind of where I'm, that, that's my closing thought. Well, thank you, Val. Thanks for sharing those incredible stories and the history of Mayo Clinic Labs with all of us. So we'll uh, we'll talk more, of course, in uh, future weeks and, and start looking ahead, too, of what Mayo Clinic Laboratory's vision is in uh, the coming months to the coming years. Look forward to it. The future is bright, so yes. but it's certainly not certain. So it'll be fun to discuss. Thank you so much for tuning in to Answers from the Lab. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to tune in every Thursday and every other Tuesday.